This is a group of rampant Southeast Asian gangsters. The police car mistakenly broke into their territory. The gangsters beat the special police and the vehicle into a hornet's nest. The well-trained special forces received the order to round up these bandits. Trembling with fear, he is Tama, the overlord of the Jakarta area. He has no regard for the rule of law. He shot a police undercover agent in the head. Facing the fear of death, he had lost his guts. Then Tama put a gun to the back of his head. But there was no bullet in the gun. Tama pulled out the drawer. Inside were a hammer and bullets. He felt that the gun was not exciting enough. So he picked up the hammer. He looked at him coldly. And then he swung the hammer. The special forces lost track of the undercover agent for a long time. Captain Jaka issued a siege operation to avoid alerting Tama on the roof. They must quietly take out the rest of the floor guards. Jaka ordered one of his men to sneak around the back and tie a rope around his neck when he is not ready. The guards outside the door were taken care of gently. Then they entered the first floor of the building. But the sound of breaking down the door disturbed the sleeping soldier. He tried to escape by climbing through the window. But in the end, he was caught by the special police. As the operation progressed smoothly, they arrived on the fifth floor. Suddenly there was a child in front of them. Looking at the pitiful child, Jaka lowered his guard. But they still underestimated the child's faith. The moment Jaka told his team to put down their guns, the child took the opportunity to rush into the house to inform other people. To prevent exposure, he immediately raised his gun and fired. But the message got through to his accomplices upstairs. The SWAT team fought to catch up with the kid, but it was too late. The moment Jaka jumped on him, the kid had already triggered the alarm system. The SWAT team's whereabouts were revealed to Tama. He ordered Mad Dog to shut down the power to all floors. Then, they launched a counterattack against the SWAT team and wiped them out on the floor. Just now, the mob leader ordered a counterattack on the special forces. The mob snipers on the roof were ready to kill. They first avoid the target's vitals and make him wail in pain. Thus, luring the snake out of the hole, he heard the screams of his teammates. He immediately went to the window to check the situation. He didn't expect his position to be exposed to the sniper's view. The police officer inside the house saw this. They are rushing to check the injury of their companions. But the thug beside him was already struggling. Just see him quietly put his hands from the back around his feet. Then he slowly pulled out the machete under the table. The sound of the blade rubbing against the wooden board. But the police officer saw the scene of his teammate being shot in the head. And they lost the vigilance the police should have. The thug took his life with a single stab. The cunning thug posed as a civilian and asked the SWAT team for help. He was shot dead just as the SWAT officer reacted. He then reported to Tama that he had seized control of the fifth floor. And Jaka's special forces are lurking on the sixth floor. This is the perfect time to kill them all. Tama turned off the power. Additionally, it activated the communication blocking function. Because the headquarters was out of contact and the power was cut off. The fear of darkness in this environment. The special forces team was demoralized. They were in disarray. The thugs upstairs took the opportunity to shoot wildly. The special forces team suffered heavy losses as a result. Fortunately, they broke through the door to avoid the mob's gunfire. Then they used the sofa cabinet to hold the door to prevent the thugs from breaking in. Another SWAT officer tried to go to the window to find a way out, but he was shot to death by the thugs outside the window. The number of thugs outside the door was also increasing. If he doesn't find a way to escape, the special squad will be wiped out. The moment of crisis, Rama used his feet to test the thinnest part of the floor. Then he used the axe to cut the floor under his feet. The mob saw that the door could not be attacked. They immediately opened fire with machine guns. Before the mob could break through the door, Rama finally cut a big hole in the floor. Captain jumped down first. Unexpectedly, he was attacked by the enemy in an ambush below. Teammates immediately jumped down to support. After some physical struggle, finally, saw the thugs in the room, and the thugs upstairs also followed. Special police immediately pushed him out of the window. Then he used his machine gun to shoot at the hole he had cut to repel the thug. Rama felt bad. A jump to dodge the bullets coming from the door. With the cooperation of his teammates, he took down a large group of thugs outside the door. Another teammate tries to do the same thing again. He just raised his axe. The teammate was killed by the thugs downstairs. Angry special squad shooting wildly downstairs. He sees that today's fate is inevitable. Rama decided to take the plunge. I pulled out the gas can and stuffed it in the fridge. He called his teammates to help him push it to the door. Rama immediately pulled the safety off the grenade and threw it into the fridge to repel the thugs. He took the risk of breaking the gas can. When Tama saw this, he arranged for his subordinates to clean up the scene. As soon as they found any survivors, they were eliminated. 
Fortunately, Rama took his injured companion away in advance. He thought he could get to the seventh floor and be safe. Unexpectedly, he was chased by the mob again. Although Rama, after a long fight, Rama had spent a lot of physical strength, but he is an excellent special forces soldier. In the end, he was able to deal with them one by one, but the fierce fight alerted the thugs upstairs. Rama to ensure the safety of his teammates. Rama sought the help of the residents to escape from the mob. But Booty was worried that if the mob found out, the family will die without a place to die. His wife also tried to discourage her husband from meddling. But the kind-hearted man opened the door to the house and let them hide in a hidden compartment in the wall. The mob followed him. Booty's home was searched. The mob suspected that the hidden compartment was hiding a target. Then a knife stabbed in. Rama and his teammates were scared and kept pushing back. But the solid wall behind them made them wait for death. The thug stabbed him in the face. If there was one more stab, Rama's life would have ended there. Even the two men were shaking with fear. Rama carefully held his hand over the knife. He wiped the blood from the blade as the thug pulled it out. After no sign of Rama, they turned around and left. Rama let out a long breath. Then he left his seriously wounded teammate to booty. He went alone to look for the rest of his teammates. As he left the house, he encountered a mob waiting for him. The weakened Rama started an endless fight again. After some time of fighting, Rama was accidentally slashed in the back. He fought back against the enemy. Then he grabbed the thug's neck and jumped back hard. And he was killed. The thugs came back with reinforcements. By this time, Rama was already exhausted. Finally, he chose to die with the thug. Inside the house, the special forces team was almost completely wiped out. The gangster's sophisticated deployment. The siege operation must have been compromised. Chaka angrily questioned the undercover agent, but he was too cunning to admit it. Chaka wanted to go out to look for other teammates, but suddenly, Mad Dog had been waiting outside the door for a long time. White saw the situation and ran away. Mad Dog forced Chaka into the house and unloaded his gun. He wanted to have a duel with Chaka. This makes Chaka more confident. He is a special forces soldier. How could he possibly take a small man seriously? Mad Dog takes the lead. Chaka was defeated by Mad Dog. Mad Dog didn't give him a chance. A top knee will kill him. On the other hand, Rama was determined to die. Rama fell from a high building against the mob. Luckily, the air conditioning frame caught them. The thug at the bottom died instantly. Rama was exhausted by now after surviving death. With his current state, there is an enemy. He would have quickly taken his life. I didn't expect him to come. Rama fought hard to resist, and the man in front of him didn't want to kill him. Instead, he told Rama to calm down. It turned out to be the second in command of the gang. It was Rama's long-lost brother, Andy. Just now, Tama told his subordinates to go downstairs and clean up the mess. Andy took the opportunity to clear up the obstacles for his brother. Then Andy told his brother to stay here, wait for the wind to pass before coming out. Then he went back to Tama to report to him. Andy thought he could hide what he was doing from the world. But Tama had already seen it clearly on the surveillance. He smiled and gave a wink. Mad Dog understood. Andy was then hung in the air. Mad Dog was torturing him like crazy. The screams were heard throughout the building. Rama also heard the sound and came to the door. When he arrived at the door, he saw his brother being abused. Mad Dog used him as a sandbag. He was hitting him in the stomach repeatedly. Rama's attention was drawn by the painful wailing. This is precisely what Mad Dog wanted. He was seeing his brother's arrival. And he knew that the two brothers would die. Because Mad Dog's strength is one of the best in Southeast Asia. The arrogant Mad Dog released Andy. Because Rama was no match for him. He would fight with his fists until the brothers conquered him. The king of Southeast Asia is not a name to be reckoned with. The two brothers combined to fight. Mad Dog didn't get hurt by the two brothers. Just as Mad Dog was about to choke Rama to death. Andy picks up a lamp and sticks it in Mad Dog's neck. Angry, Mad Dog decided to make him pay with his life. But because of the seriousness of his injuries, in the end, it was Rama who put an end to it. On the other hand, a SWAT officer followed Old White to storm Tama's command post. Then he tied him up. To his surprise, he shot his colleague dead. It turns out that the top boss of the particular unit, Tama was already in cahoots with him. This time, in the name of cleaning up the gangsters, but in fact, it was a plan to eliminate the special unit. The top boss's plan to eliminate the dissidents failed. Old Bai will take all the blame. The more he thought about it, the angrier he became. He shot Tama in the head. He wanted to kill himself with a bullet, but the gun in his hand had no bullets. Once Tama was dead, Andy became the boss here, and Rama returned to the army with Old White. But it wasn't long before. Andy was shot in the head by the new Bankun gang. Please subscribe to my channel. 
Share different movies and videos every day.